Well, let's discuss the first home buyer's plan a little more now with Sally Tyndall from Rate City, who's with us in the studio. Sally, good to see you. So what, um, what do you make of this plan, given that both the coalition and the opposition are now backing this? Oh, look, it was a plan from the coalition that Labor jumped on hours later, so they kind of put too much thought into it. And I think what Scott Morrison was intending to do was give first home buyers a reason to vote for him because previously he was saying all the right things to property owners about house prices continuing to rise and fall under labour but he never really threw a bone to people wanting to get into the property market and this was the bone. But it's only 10,000 people. Only, that's right it's only 10,000 when you scratch the surface it's only a very small amount and my big question is is this in the best interest of first home buyers? When you think about it, 5% deposit, APRA has spent the last four and a half years actively telling the banks that low deposit loans were risky. Now, both sides of politics are actively encouraging it. I'm not so sure that it's best in their best interest. Let's bring in Marsha Keegan with SGS Economics. She joins us now from Canberra as well. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Marsha. What do you think this policy will do to prices? There is a potential for any property that any policy that makes it easier to buy a dwelling uh, to have an upward pressure on prices, uh, <clears throat> and this policy is no different. However, it's only going to affect a small number of purchases and in fairly limited circumstances. It's limited to only uh, 10,000 buyers per year, um, and it's going to be limited to people who've already saved up a 5% deposit. So, while there's the potential for some upward pressure, I think that's probably going to be fairly minimal. Well, yeah, when you say there is that potential for upside pressure, I mean, as you say, it's only 10,000 buyers. So what sort of pressure would that exert? Probably not. Not very much pressure in the, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it, uh, when you look at all the other things that are happening over the property market at the moment, uh, there's downward pressure from uh, banks being a bit more uh, conservative when it comes to lending to people. Uh, you've got the impacts of the wider economy. Uh, we have low inflation and we have uh, low, growth in, uh, lo low growth in consumer expenditure. However, we've still got strong employment. So all these things are going to have an impact as well. And it may not be possible to determine the specific impact of this policy. Sally Tyndall, both you and Marsha have pointed out that it's at the moment limited to 10,000 potential home buyers. But Scott Morrison just this afternoon in Perth said that if there is greater demand, they'll look at expanding that scheme. So what what are the risks associated with that? Well, if you're getting someone to pay just a 5% deposit, uh, they're only, and say on a $500,000 home that they're looking to buy, they're only going to have to rustle together $25,000, which sounds great on the surface, but when you have a look at it, they're paying higher mortgage repayments, $371 extra a month because of that, and they're also going to pay uh, $58,000 extra over the life of their loan in interest. So you've got to weigh up uh, the pros of, you know, avoiding L lenders' mortgage insurance, which is LMI, which is a great saving. The pro of perhaps getting to your own home faster and avoiding having to pay rent against this really hefty interest charge a long way down the track. It also comes at a time where, if not a record, perhaps at a near record for mortgage delinquencies. So what sort of mes message does it send? Oh, not the right message, I don't think. I think that it's sending to the whole market, even though it's only targeted at 10,000, it's sending to the whole market, first home buyers, this signal that a wafer-thin deposit is OK. Now, we've got to think about whether in the very likely scenario that house prices continue to fall and you've only got a 5% deposit, you could end up in negative equity territory. You might be shackled to your home loan uh, for a number of years as a result of that. And Marsha, do you agree that's one of the real risks, having a mortgage where you owe more than the property is worth? It is certainly a risk if the program was expanded, and I think that's something that should be kept in mind. Uh, 10,000 is unlikely to have uh, a significant impact on the overall housing market. However, <clears throat> if this was expanded greatly and a lot of people got, uh, were um, buying, buying, buying houses with only a 5% deposit, uh, <clears throat> 
and uh, then you could have impacts on the market in the sense that it could be uh, there could be a bit of a sugar hit as people uh, borrowed more and uh, people bought more houses. But if there was a downturn, if uh, the the more people you have at risk of default, the greater the impact, the greater the risk of having an economy wide impact. So I'd suggest that it would be better off to start at ten thousand and then perhaps monitor that over time and see how uh, see how things go with those borrowers. I mean, there have been times uh, throughout over the last twenty years when it has been more common to be able to get a 5% deposit and in many cases or in most cases these people were able to pay off uh, pay off their loans and there was some growth and as they paid down their debt uh, they were a bit more secure in things and a bit uh, and at low and at lower risk of default however if a lot of people enter the market all at once uh, with only 5% deposits during a time when the property market is itself looking a bit shaky and there's some uncertainty in the economy then there's potential risks uh, risks of uh, significant downsides inside there so, Sally, the government is essentially guaranteeing that, that shortfall to, to make up as such as the, uh, the deposits concerned. If a buyer was to default then on their loan, what are the implications, certainly for the government? Oh, well, the government would have to step up. It's just like mum and dad guaranteeing your home loan, except it's Scott Morrison or Bill Shorten. Uh, so they are exposing themselves to significant risk if the borrowers do default, because they're backing 15%, up to 15% of that loan. Marsha, this scheme is based on WA's Key Start scheme, or at least it's taken a lot of um, ideas from that. That's been a very successful scheme in WA, hasn't it? Where some home buyers only need a 2% deposit. Once you start getting uh, down to the two uh, two percent deposit level, that's uh, that's starting to become that's starting to get quite risky uh, because two percent of uh, you know two uh, percent is very can be saved up very quickly and easy easily. It can be topped up with uh, gifts from uh, parents or family members very easily, and and essentially means that a person isn't a, isn't demonstrating um, a reliable and consistent savings behaviour if they've only got to save a two two percent deposit. Uh, with a five percent deposit, at least that's saving more over um, <clears throat> uh, at least a person is looking at saving at least you know tens of thousands of dollars which will take some time to build up and so they are demonstrating solid beha solid savings behavior I think we also have to keep in mind that in the grand scheme of things the bank will still have to be it will, it will still be the decider of whether uh, the person who is borrowing the money is uh, is a credit worthy borrower or not um, if there's concerns about um, whether the whether um, the person borrowing the money is going to be able to repay uh, the bank still has has the opportunity to go through their finances and make sure that this person is a low risk before they decided to, before they decide to lend. Is there an argument that, given um, house prices have fallen quite substantially in most of the major capital central cities, that this is not required at this point? I guess if you also, as far as labour is concerned, given they want to bring in those changes to negative gearing and, and capital gains tax, that. Um, Perhaps this is not necessary. What, what do you think, Sally? Well, I think that's a really good question because we've just seen the latest round of housing finance figures and investors are down 25% or more, 25.9% year on year. They've already retreated significantly from the market. And what we saw in today's results as well is that first home buyers are taking the biggest slice of the new loans being written, 27.2%, than they have since March 2012. So they are coming back. They are taking back that spot that... Um, um, was held by investors, uh, and I think that that's significant. Maybe we don't need to do anything just yet. Marsha, what, what, do you question the timing? I mean, obviously, it is on the eve of an election, so you're going to get announcements like this, but, but do you question the timing? I, sus I suspect that this has been brought in... Um, as a means to possibly put, uh, have a small upward pressure on prices at the time when the market is going down. So I think one reason uh, potentially why uh, Labor jumped on this policy as soon as, as, soon as it was announced uh, was because then we may need to have some... Po well, th there is possibly some room uh, for policies that will, uh, will uh, slow the decline in house prices. So I think that there, there is possible, possibly a, de deliberate, uh, a deliberate strategy well, here. What do you think it may be a counterbalance to the policies they're planning to bring in if they win government? Sorry, what was that? Do you think this may well be some sort of counterbalance for Labor if they were to win government on those policies that they've announced as far as housing is concerned? I think it's more that both sides of politics can see that house prices have gone down. Um, there's certainly nothing to show that they're not going to continue their downward trajectory in the foreseeable future. In the foreseeable future. Um, how, so essentially making it easier for first-time buyers to enter the market uh, could at least put you know, a very, very small break on that uh, fall in house prices. 
Sally, to pick up on something that Marcia was talking about earlier, which was the banks, and that's the big question, isn't it, is how the big banks will react to this. What will they do if you have a 5% deposit, given that we were just talking last week that now banks are looking for a 30% deposit when you're looking to buy a home as opposed to 20%, which was always the, the standard. Well, it's interesting that Scott Morrison took the big four banks out of the question in this, in this scheme. Um, they've said that they will target smaller banks and non-bank lenders because they were trying to defuse any potential criticism of giving the big four banks a boost. Uh, this policy will actually give smaller banks a boost because they'll be getting uh, bigger loans and they'll be getting them repaid over 30 years. Uh, but I do think that they'll still cross their T's and dot their I's. I don't think any bank wants to be out there writing loans that they don't think a borrower can repay. I think, I think it's too risky for them. They don't want to get in trouble with the regulator. But, well, yeah, you talk about the regulator there because of course there are much tighter lending regulations now than there were uh, three or four years ago. So uh, are the banks going to be torn here thinking well they'd obviously like more business, this is an opportunity but at the same time they have to keep the regulator pleased. I think we're all a little bit torn with, with this one because APRA has been saying for years tighten, 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 tighten and they're mm. finally doing what APRA has asked and now the government is asking them to do the complete opposite. Uh, but they will I think try and cherry pick the right first home buyers for this scheme and it's good that it's only 10000 because they'll be able to find some uh, first-home buyers with, you know, really, really uh, backed by good professions that they've got a high um, chance of getting another job if they suddenly found themselves unemployed and a strong record of savings. And I think that they will target them instead of pe people that might look a bit shaky on paper. Marcia, the Housing Industry Association, which was consulted by the coalition on this policy, says being able to pay rent shows prospective home buyers have the capacity to service a loan. What do you make of that? To some extent, this is quite true. If you take a person <clears throat> who, say, for example, has an income of $1,000 a week and uh, perhaps they pay $300 a week in rent, uh, they, spend, uh, they spend, say, uh, $500 a week on expenses and they're able to save $200 a week. Uh, they won't be able to save up much, much of a deposit in a short period of time, only saving $200 a week. Um, <clears throat> however, if you take into however, if they're able to save a, you know, a certain amount, say, $20, 30 you know, uh, $40,000 over a period of time, and then they're able to demonstrate that they're putting aside $300 a week for rent and um, plus $200 in savings. That's potentially $500 a week that could go towards paying a mortgage if, if they were to buy a place. Uh, so I think if it's if they're demonstrating uh, strong uh, uh, regular payment of rent and also strong savings behaviour on top of that, uh, then uh, potentially that person is a good candidate for uh, being able to pay a mortgage regularly. Just before both of you go, actually, is there... Is there any scheme that you have come across anywhere in the world that you think actually works and is not to the detriment of the economy or at least um, the, uh, those who are trying to, to buy their first home? Oh, look, from every one that I've looked at, it's uh, had pushed up property prices or threatened to, and that's not the goal here, I don't think. I mm. think that Labor's negative gearing changes is one that will... Uh, create structural change in our market, uh, but it has the potential of seeing property prices fall. Marcia, any uh, other clues as far as your concern as to schemes that may well work? In short, uh, if you want to make housing more, more affordable, the easiest way to do this is with lower house prices. Um, um, and I know it's very unpopular to say, you know, lower house prices are a good thing, but if it means that everyone can pay less for shelter, then that means that's more money that they've got uh, to spend on other things that stimulate the economy. Which is happening now? Uh, as house prices come down? Yes. Uh, yes, it means that people, um, if they're able to take on less of a mortgage burden, that means they can take out their mortgage and they can still have more money to, uh, say, go out to eat, go on holidays, give, take their kids to sports lessons and that sort of thing. Marcia Keegan and Sally Tyndall, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, thank you. Man.